Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm DIY Dana, your friendly neighborhood DIYer. Finally, I have an opportunity to film with a new backdrop. Oh. And if you haven't seen me create this cool new backdrop, I will link it right here. This episode has been long awaited and that is part three of my living room makeover. Yeah. Hold the applause everybody, hold the applause. <laughs> There are a lot of fun DIY upgrades and projects happening in this episode, but before we jump in, I do want to thank the sponsor of this episode, which is Glasses USA, who truly did help me see the finish line to this makeover. <laughs> Get it? It's because I'm wearing a pair of glasses now. Uh, and it's why I look so darn trendy today. Mm -hmm. I will get into more conversation about that, but until that time, let's jump into all of this DIY makeover madness. Editor, roll the tape. Boop. Before we get into any DIYs, I figure we need to do a small update on where is the living room at because a couple changes have been made since part two. Let me update you. First update, I'm sad to say, but I have replaced the blanket ladder, not because it didn't work, but because I broke it. Long story short, there was a small wobble to it. I took it into the garage to fix it. When I did that, I totally hulked the situation. And then the whole thing just snapped. Yep. Needless to say, this new blanket ladder came into play. I did a partnership with the Home Depot Canada to create a couple DIYs on their YouTube channel. So when this video goes live, I will let you know so you can learn how to build it too. It's very cute. The next change was I added this cool trendy basket and then uh, another cool project that's part of the Home Depot run is uh, this really cool plant stand. I put it in my window, really happy with that. Really, that's about it. So, as I've promised, I want to get this gallery wall sorted. Some of you may already know this, but this video took a little bit longer to complete because I was waiting on a few prints that I'd ordered for my new gallery wall. These beautiful prints were gifted to me from a company called Fi. Any art prints that you see in this episode today will be linked in the description box below so you can check it out. Oh, and excuse all the reflections. <laughs> Moving on. So the first print I ordered was called The Silence of Nature with a beautiful oak frame. I love this print. It's calming, minimal, black and white, and just evokes everything I want this living room to feel. Calm and connected to nature. The second print I ordered was called the Sunblock Print. Again, I was going for a black and neutral vibe, and I just love how happy the sun makes me. It's like a burst of energy. The third print that I ordered was called, You Don't Look the Same as When I Was Dreaming. The color palette of this was totally in line with my theme. I liked the black, dark green, and the white with a natural wood frame. But then I also just love the playful, quirky nature of this photo. It just suits my personality so well. Look how manly he is, look at his arms. <laughs> as he embraces his woman. I cannot love you, I just wanna eat you. And she's like, no Brad, just love me. I know you know it's me in there. I can't do this anymore. I love you anyways. As you can see, I try not to take things too seriously and this definitely fit the bill. Oh. It's fun, it's conversational, and it definitely deserves to be on my gallery wall. The last print that I had ordered was this cool typographical art print that said, the magic is in you. Do I need to say more? You guys get it, I know you do. So when I was approaching this gallery wall, I decided that I kind of had to pick a theme. For me, I was kind of going for an eclectic look, so woods, blacks, and white frames. And then on top of that, I was looking for things that were going to complement each other. There are a couple frames that I do own. There's this one. This is a piece that was from Minted. I also have this one. It's a little bit more textured. This was just a frame I bought from the dollar store. I don't really like the artwork. I don't think it goes with the theme, but this could be an opportunity to create something of my own. This had an old uh, art piece in it. I don't love it for this gallery wall, but I do love the frame. Secret Garden Lady, she's beautiful. 
I just wonder if she's right for this gallery wall. We'll find out. So my next step is to create templates for each of these art pieces and then put the templates onto the wall so that we can visualize the best placement for all these pieces and then figure out if we need to add pieces, take away pieces, yeah, yeah. So to get my art piece templates, I'm laying out some craft paper on the ground, tracing around each art piece and then simply cutting them out with scissors. Of course, I like to name each piece because it all starts to look like a lot of rectangular shapes at the end of the day. By creating templates, this was allowing me to play around with the look of the gallery on the wall without having to commit to placing nails in my wall. I also have this frame that was in the office that I think would actually work well in this situation. So I'm gonna make a template for this. And then I think this goes here. One thing I did need to keep in mind though was the color of my frames. I needed to make sure that I didn't put two black frames or two wood frames directly beside each other. Sun versus black. Okay. Let me tell you, this process is not as easy as people think. All I'm saying is give yourself time before you start committing to nails. I speak from experience. There was a lot of, hmm, huh, hmm. We are so close. Basically sums up that entire process. I also have this, if you remember it. I think this might be kind of cool up in this corner here. Yep, I think that's it, my friends. We got there. Yes! Now it's time to make some custom artwork. For the first piece of DIY art in my square frame, I decided to keep to my nature theme. On a mixed media paper, I was drawing a leaf pattern in a pencil, then highlighted it with my black pigment liner marker. To give it a little bit more texture and softness, I finished it off with a charcoal pencil on top. Another quick and easy DIY art piece for the vault. For my second DIY art piece, I took my inspiration from those cool tree trunk art pieces. Using watercolor paper, I thought it would be kind of neat to stain the paper first with the tea bag, just to yellow it a bit. You can totally use a watercolor for this as well, but I was just opting to have a little fun. Once that was dry, I simply took my black pigment markers and drew out a tree trunk shape in the corner of the paper. Simple, minimal, and easy. Okay, before we move on full transparency, I didn't really end up liking the yellow paper after it was all said and done, so I did end up recreating this on an off-white craft paper. Okay, thanks. Listen, it happens, okay? I change my mind all the time, if you know. You know those drawings when you see the lines kind of noodling around in the thought bubble? That's my head, all the time. There is one thing that is bugging me. This is a very light frame. This is a very light frame, but this one is more of a warmer veneer. And if I take some sandpaper to it, I can actually lighten up the frame a little bit to kind of mimic these looks. Who's ready to hang the gallery wall? I am, I am, I am. I am. wall is done, I think. I don't know, I'm like, I feel like I've been staring at it for so long that I have no idea if I like it. <laughs> so I'm gonna let it sit for the evening and then we will reconvene in the morning to get final thoughts and maybe I'll have moved a whole bunch of things around, who knows? So I will see you all tomorrow for day two of part three. <laughs> Now that we have art on the wall, it's best that you can see it in its full glory, which is why I'm excited about the sponsor of today's episode, GlassesUSA.com. You know those times in life when like the stars just seem to align? Well, this is definitely one of those times. I am nearsighted, which means anything in front of me is perfectly in focus, but two feet on? 
little questionable. If I am not wearing glasses, it does not bode well in social situations. Especially when somebody across the room is like, hey, and I'm like, hey, who are you? I can't see you. So I was looking for a new pair of glasses because my old ones were a little beat up, and I honestly thought I was gonna have to wait until this pandemic was over. During this reflection, suddenly I get an email from glassesusa.com that says, hey, we make buying glasses online super easy and convenient. And I'm like, oh yeah? Well, I'll be the judge of that. So I head over to their online platform, realize they have this cool virtual try-on tool, I uploaded my photo, tried on a few pairs of glasses that I liked, added in my prescription, and the next thing you know, I had four brand new trendy pairs of glasses at my doorstep and the shipping was free. You can customize your lenses for both sunglasses and eyeglasses with a variety of coatings and options. Prescription, blue light blocking, anti-scratch, UV protection, and or mirrored and polarized for sunglasses. And if I wasn't happy with my order, I had 14 days to do a full refund, product exchange, or 100% store credit, no questions asked, and hassle free. If you like any of the glasses you've seen on me or you want to just go try on a few pairs, click the link in my description box and you'll receive 65% on the first pair of glasses you buy. Happy seeing everyone! It is just so lovely to see your faces from far away. <laughs> Good morning, it is a brand new day. So, I did exactly what I said I was going to do and I ended up switching some things on the wall yesterday and it works so much better now. I can't wait to show you. I'm gonna hold off because I wanna wait till the very end so you can see everything in its full glory, but this wall looks 10 times better. But in the meantime, today's focus is on a very big problem. Let me show you. This is my couch. It's a lovely couch 98% of the time. This side of the couch is great. It's got a side table. You can put your drinks down. If you have a laptop, you can work over here. It's a really great, cozy little spot. But this side of the couch doesn't have a nice, cozy side table. As you can see, it is a main walkway, so I can't actually add a side table or it's going to get hit or nudged or the dog's gonna swipe it with its tail. It's just not really a functional side, so I have a solution and we're gonna make it today. I wanna create something that kind of sits on the armrest and then has a little piece here for like either book or laptop that I always have at the computer and then has a little lip so it stays on the armrest. But I think if you're sitting here on the couch, you don't want a hard edge or corner that's gonna like hit you if you sit down. I wanted it to be soft, so going with this kind of oval or half circle shape is definitely the solution to that. I think it's gonna be cool, guys. Let's make a DIY side table. Yeah! <laughs> That's my high five to you guys. <laughs> okay, let's go. To build this floating side table, I'm using scrap wood from a past project. <laughs> it was my entryway. Just reusing that wood I already had, folks. First I measured and traced my half moon shape. Once I was happy, I used a jigsaw to cut it out. All right, we have a top. Does it look like my mouth? Like a giant emoji? Using that same wood piece, I'm measuring out the front piece to my magazine rack area. Next I used a scrap pile 1x2 piece of lumber and measured out 8 inches and 14 inches. The 8 inch piece will act as my front lip and the 14 inch piece will be the bottom of my magazine rack. Last I measured, marked and cut out my 14 by 12 back piece using a circular saw with a straight edge clamped down to help guide me. Moving on to the sanding, safety first dudes. Using a 220 grit sandpaper, I'm just removing any wood rips on my edges and smoothing down the sides. Using my trusty pocket hole jig, I drilled holes into my 12 by 14 back piece in three spots and my front one by two bar. Then using wood glue and a one and quarter pocket hole screw, this back was screwed into place. When I went to attach my front piece, I realized I measured it too long. So I had to quickly adjust that and it was good to go. Easy fix. 
For the bottom one by two, I glued, pre-drilled, and screwed this piece in place with a one and a half inch wood screw. It was at that moment I realized I glued it in the wrong way. Oh no! So I unscrewed it, readjusted, and screwed it back in. To attach the front piece, I decided to use a brad nailer with two inch brad nails. I like this tool because it creates a minimal hole that's easy to fill in later with wood fill. It's way less invasive and totally okay to use if it's not intended to hold something that will be heavy or load bearing. If you don't have a brad nailer, you can always use a drill and screws. Using wood fill, I'm filling in any holes or imperfections from the plywood. Then let that dry and simply sand it away flat. I'm really happy with the way that this turned out. I mean, was this not the vision? I have a plan to kind of make it a little bit cooler, to add kind of like the black accents that I have going on in my living room. I thought about making the edge of all of this piece black, and then the front is black. And I still have some black paint left over from my front entryway makeover, which I think would be perfect for this. So it all matches. Wish me luck. What, every DIYer deserves a snack break, okay? Okay, now let's go. It's actually pretty cool, and I think it's gonna look cool once it's on the couch. It's just a detail. I'm happy with it. My armrest is drying, and the last DIY that's gonna bring the entire living room together is currently right here. These are the two chairs that I currently have in my living room. I've been thinking it would be kind of cool to do the top black, the legs black, and then leave the base white. I just thought it would give it some personality and some fun. I'm feeling DIY bold today. Time to start taping. Okay, I would just like to note that I really dislike painting chairs. I will paint every wall in my house before wanting to paint those chairs. But it had to be done. This is the way. Or I have a way better idea. Hold the phone. Guys, we're doing everything black except for the spindles. <gasps> so I decided it would be really cool to paint the spindles pink. Trust, just trust. So I taped off the spindles. It literally took forever. I oh know! I'm bleeding again. DIY band aid. That's probably really bad for the cut. My mother would be so proud of me right now. And got painting those chairs black. And yep, still dislike painting those chairs. It just never gets easier, never gets better. And while the chairs were drying, I brought my side table back in and sanded any areas where the black paint was not supposed to be. Just cleaned up the edges and placed a matte finish on top. I think I made some good DIY progress today, but I'm not gonna finish the chairs tonight like I hoped. So tomorrow morning, I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna do the chairs. I'm not even against the white on the spindles, but I really wanna try pink. I mean, like, it's not really like my first color that I gravitate towards, but like, I'm fun. I can like pink, okay? Okay? <laughs> I will see you guys early tomorrow morning. All right, we are on our final day and things are moving and shaking. We're going pink. It's gonna be controversial. Y'all are gonna be like, no, why'd you go pink? We're doing it because we're bold and we're DIYers and that's what we do. I'm just trying to justify it to myself. <laughs> to save myself time, I decided not to tape the second chair. Instead, I used a smaller brush when I got closer to the ends and this didn't really work well. I did not do a good job. But it turns out neither did the tape. Yeah, it definitely leaked. If I don't end up liking these pink spindles, they're just gonna stay pink because I can't even fathom the idea of repainting these. The whole process was just one big hot mess. The chairs are finished. It's a miracle. I realized there is a trick to painting all the small little spindle areas, precision brushes. I know that seems crazy, but it didn't really occur to me to go get one of my regular art brushes. Funny enough, I actually ended up using this guy. And it took me a really long time, but it did the trick. Everything looks crispy. All the spindles look good. Very happy. 
what do you say we go put all this stuff in and we see what this room looks like now that everything is all done. Are you ready for the DIY living room makeover? The neighbors think I'm weird. Here it is everyone, my little oasis of happiness finally completed. The gallery wall looks absolutely stunning. The big change I ended up making was moving the hanging staghorn plan to the right side of my TV and removed the ladder, which now has a happy home in my bedroom. Moving the plant opened up room for these two art pieces and it all just fell into place. Before, everything just felt really crowded, but I finally found a happy balance, and it just brings me so much joy. The room feels larger, taller. It is amazing what art can do to transform a space. And my side table, is it not perfect? It has a beautiful shape with the half moon that really complements other elements within the space a functional flat top and extra storage for magazines or a laptop. And that pop of black adds so much interest and cohesiveness to the rest of the space. It's just perfect. Then come on, the chairs. Do those black chairs not look cool or what? A beautiful matte black with a pop of pink that complements all the colors worked into this space. It's playful, and as you can see, I did end up painting the table base as well. Very late the night before on a whim, may I add? But the black pop against the white walls completed the mood of this space and really pulled the theme together. From the updated cabinet and side table, upgraded and styled wall shelf, a beautiful gallery wall, a functional floating side table with style, an accented front entryway, and a stunning pop of color table set. This entire open concept living space was finally completely mine. Thank you so much for following along this crazy, epic DIY living room makeover journey with me. And thank you again to the sponsor of this episode, GlassesUSA.com. If you're looking for cool, trendy glasses like mine, don't forget to click the link in the description box and you will receive a 65% off your first pair of glasses. Isn't that cool? I hope you all enjoyed this entire makeover series. You guys should let me know what you think about the pink spindle because now that I'm looking at it, I feel kind of on the fence about it. I think I might want to make them dark green to kind of match the cool side table. Do you think that the cool bold spindles is a good idea? Should I just embrace it for a while and then see how I feel? Or are you guys with me on the green? Let me know in the comment section below. I love your opinion so much and uh, I will see you guys next week. Woo!